Good day, meteorologist DT with our midday update for Florence. I know I told you earlier I was going to do a podcast, but there's so many people hitting the website, I'm simply not able to upload the images and the data. Period. That happens from time to time when you become more popular than, let's say, Lindsay Lohan. So, you know, sometimes the website gets crashed or gets locked up, and that happens. That's why I uh, do the videos, because it all I can lo upload them fairly quickly, make them fairly quickly, depending on the, the subject matter and uh, get the information out there to people who want to have it. So, And the other advantage of it, even though I'm more popular than Lindsay Lohan, I'm not a drunken skank. So it works out good. Okay, let's get right to it. Here's 11 a.m. advisory. Uh, as you can see from the Hurricane Center, again, you know, most of you have probably already seen this, So, but I just, we always start out with the posting there. And you can see now that it actually has the turn uh, underway actually a little bit here. And then this here is Wilmington, in case you don't know, and over here is Cape Hatteras. And this little bump here is Moorhead City. So you can see what it's doing is it's taking this turn in here, and then it goes and swings up this way. We'll get into that in a little bit. <clears throat> so this is not really a surprise in terms of uh, what the uh, model is showing or what the track is showing. It's not really a change. This is the latest recon. And again, Florence continues to weekend. Uh, this, again, let me point this out so you can follow this because this is a little confusing to people. First, let's take a look at this one. So the red line is the mean sea level pressure. That's how low the pressure is. So you see the red line here goes down to here around 957 millibars. Now the blue line is the flight level winds. So you can see over here, look at the winds. You can see 95 knots at the peak just before into the eye wall in, which is 105 miles an hour. It's not even 110 miles an hour. So it continues to weaken a little bit. And then again, you can see <clears throat> this, uh, the surface winds here on the SFMR, they're like uh, 85 knots, which is a little less. Okay, so it's, it's definitely a weaker hurricane than it was. There's no doubt about that. And one of the reasons is remains this. This is the uh, visible satellite picture here from this morning, midday. You can see the shear. And if you can't see it, you want to look at the red lines here. Um, and you can see this is 40 knots of shear. This is 30 knots of shear. So there's the, there's the eye of it. So you have all this wind blowing in this direction, which is weakening the top of it. And you can see these large gaps developing. And you'll see it in a second. <clears throat> and the hurricane eye to the western side of it. That's never a good sign for a hurricane. So uh, it look you can see it even more here on the infrared picture. And now this one on the left is from 9, uh, 9 o'clock this morning, uh, excuse me, 10 a.m. this morning. And the one here is from 11.30. And you can see, you see the eye is right in there, as you can see right in here. And then the eye looks a lot harder to find here. Now we're also getting this fairly strong convection on the north side here. This is nice to see. But again, look at the big gaps here. This is the dry air getting a train. See this here? dry air. And the reason for this, look, a hurricane is a big cir circulation, especially a nice sized storm like Florence. So it's pulling in air from off of Kentucky, Tennessee, wrapping it all the way into the center and it's disrupting the flow. <clears throat> so in the old days, the big hurricanes that were really severe that we talk about a lot in the hurricane business, like Hurricane Hazel in 1954, all right, or Hurricane Donna in 1960, or even the Long Island hurricane in 1938. They all moved at a very fast forward speed of 50, 60, 70 miles an hour up the coast. And what that does is that prevents you from pulling in the dry air. The dry air doesn't get a chance to get wrapped into the core, so the hurricane stays a lot stronger. When you have these slow moving hurricanes like this, whether it's here on the Gulf Coast, we saw this, let's say, with Hurricane Ike back in 2008. And you see it here, it pulls in the dry air and it hurts it a little bit. So that's kind of what the problem is. Okay. Now, let's, again, the argument is that it's too far north. It's going much further north than it's supposed to. That's essentially a bullshit argument. And we can take a look at it here by taking a look at the visible pictures. So I've highlighted two points here, reference points on this image. So the blue line, this is the longitude line, 75 longitude, okay, right here. That's Norfolk, or as you go uh, up north, they go Norfolk. That's Norfolk. And there's Hatteras. This is, this is Moorhead City, and there is Wilmington. Now, here's the core right here. This is 35, 34 degrees north latitude. See that right there? So that's the conjunction. You can, if we look at that point here, now we can see the eye is just about here. So it's clearly turning to the west, northwest. It clearly is doing that. It's not a surprise. It's, not, it's, it's just not a shock. It's not, it's, people can claim that all they want to. It's, it's nonsense. Now here, again, you can see the track. Without all the clouds on it, you can see a very nice image here. It is going to bend and then to the west and maybe like Manfall just north of Wilmington. That's very possible. Maybe Emerald Island, I can't rule that out. That's halfway between the two points in case you don't know. 
you can Google it yourself, but the Emerald Island is right here, between right between Wilmington and Moorhead City, just about. So that's possible, I suppose, but I think it's going to be close to Wilmington. And if we look at the, uh, this is a nice map here, a surface map. This is 11, uh, 11 a.m. And again, why, why this? I like this map here because you can see all the longitude and latitude lines. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to say, well, what about this view? What about that view? There's the low. Here's the longitude and latitude line. So here it is. Excuse, yeah, that's not a very straight line. Sorry about that. And then you can see uh, where it's going to pass. And this here is Wilmington. So no, it's not north of Wilmington. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. It, sorry you can claim it all you want to it does, you don't get you know you get to have your own opinion you don't get to have your own facts that's just that's just science all right take a look at the wind field here this is tropical storm force winds winds of 39 miles an hour or greater you see it down at the bottom here 39 miles an hour or greater okay and uh, over the next uh, five days so who's going to see it and the probability of seeing that so as you can see obviously much of eastern north carolina is going to get slammed 90% chance all the way past Raleigh you're going to see way over tropical storm force winds in the Raleigh down past Myrtle Beach uh, maybe to Columbia and then and then, then this is Richmond let's take a look to the areas to the north so over here is Norfolk and again right on the orange line here which is 60 70 percent and then Richmond in case you're wondering on the 40 50 percent uh, Charlottesville uh, 20 to 30 percent chance uh, Lynchburg, Roanoke, Danville, about uh, 30 to 40 percent chance in there. So, uh, you, you know, it's going to be windy this weekend, definitely on Friday and Saturday. There's no doubt about that. But it's not the end of the world for much of Virginia. North Carolina, different matter. Now, when do you expect these winds? When are they first expected to arrive? Okay. This is a wonderful graph from the National Hurricane Center. Your tax dollars at work, and I want to thank you very much for sending your tax dollars to make the Hurricane Center really great. Okay. Um, so now here is the uh, Thursday uh, 8 p.m. Uh, line here, um, and you can see this is Thursday tonight. So uh, this at this point here, uh, this purple stuff says 90%, 100% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds 39 miles an hour or greater on this part of North Carolina. Now uh, up in Norfolk at this point, this um, uh, Again, that line is probably Friday 2 a.m. in Norfolk and then Richmond a little higher than, later than that. So certainly by Friday morning, much of central Virginia and all the way into western North Carolina are probably going to see tropical storm force winds are greater. So like I said, the winds are going to be increasing. And uh, now for 50 knot winds, or 50, uh, 50, 50 knot, which is 58 miles an hour higher um, over the next five days, you can see the line, we don't really get that into Virginia. We, we just don't. It's all in North Carolina and South Carolina, as you can see, with very high probabilities down there. All right, let's take a look at how this event's going to happen. Now, this is uh, the European model. If you do not get these folks here, this is a very good site here. It's uh, unknown. It's only $9 a month, and they have European. They have all the models now, the British model. They have European ensembles. They just have a tremendous selection of models here for the U.S., for the Atlantic, uh, for North America, and they're expanding all the time very good site a lot of really cool data in here severe weather winter weather snowfall all sorts of stuff i highly recommend it uh fi weather but that's just my opinion all right so here's the low okay this is a friday uh, two o'clock almost 24 hours from now there it is wilmington still there wilmington this thing is not moving as you can see and again what that means is it's going to be sucking in the dry air from over the land and it's wrapping into the center so as you notice there's not a lot of precip west of the uh, west of the uh, up west of the low, all the precip and the rain is up in here. Okay, that's fairly common with East Coast hurricanes they, as they move up the coast or approach the coast. The western side often falls apart, not all the time, but often. All right, here we have um, 66 hours. This is now takes us to, uh, I guess this would be yeah, um, two o'clock on Saturday, and you can see it's down by Charleston, so it's definitely moving southwest. There's no doubt about that, and then. Um, now this takes us into Saturday and then uh, Sunday. You can see the low begins to turn west on the Georgia, South Carolina border of all things. Can you believe that? Um, I guess it's going to happen. It's the model. All the model trend is going that way. I mean, it's pretty impressive. And then um, what happens here? This is from Monday at 8 a.m. and then Tuesday, Monday night at 8 p.m. Now notice the low begins to track to the north. Remember, it was. Let me get my marker out again so you can see this. So he came down the coast and then started coming this way. Now going northwest. You see that? And now it's, it's turning it's due north at this point. 
Now, the really white stuff is heavy, heavy rain here over these six hour time frames. So, North Carolina, so Western, the upstate portions of South Carolina, West and North Carolina, very heavy rains here, getting into Southwest Virginia by Monday, and then pretty good rains in all of Southwest Virginia and West and North Carolina Monday night into Tuesday. And the rain spreading into Central Virginia. And then, um, and that continues. Um, and of course, if we look at the actual total rainfall for the next five days, we can see that the rains, again, at the end of day five, this rain develops over here, I should say. Most of this rain is the next five days, but the rain in southwest Virginia doesn't really show up until next Monday or Tuesday, like I just showed you. And you can see the tremendous rains down in this whole area, very impressive rains down in, in, in you know, 20 inches of rain, Wilmington, just the flooding is going to be huge. South Carolina as well, interior South Carolina. And then good rains also in Hampton Roads, but that's the next five days. But if you go beyond that, how does this, what happens after that? Well, here's the upper air pattern for Saturday night. This is 72 hours. Now there's our trough, monster trough on the West Coast, which I've been talking about and talking about right here. And of course, since you have a trough here, you have to have a ridge here. Remember, for every trough, there's a ridge. For every ridge, there's a trough. Same sort of thing. Now, this is Florence here. Now, what's going to happen is this feature is going to move, and it's going to rip up the ridge. Let's take a look-see. This here is Monday night. So these pieces of energy, this is coming out of the trough, which we talked about was here. And now we have these little pieces of energy, and they rip the top of the, this ridge stuff apart. That makes an opening for Florence to turn north. So, let's, so you can see it clearly here. Okay, there is the ridge. Sunday, uh, Saturday night, and this is Monday night. See how it opens up? And that allows Florence to turn north. And that shows up in all the models. There's Florence on all the hurricane models, turning it through South Carolina, around through either northeastern Georgia or eastern Tennessee, Kentucky, and then out towards Ohio. Now, uh, the European model is not quite that far to the west, to Ohio and Kentucky. And I think that's probably correct. I think that's what we're doing it. Here's the GFS is doing the same sort of thing, swinging way out there. Maybe it goes out that far. I don't think it does. Now, the European model, all right, as you can see, has the low through southwest Virginia up the Shenandoah Valley into Virginia. It doesn't have this. Look what that is. That thing's out of Ohio, Kentucky. That's a big difference. Now, if this is correct, Virginia and Maryland does not get a lot of rain when Florence comes north, if that's correct. But if this is correct, we get a lot of rain. So there you go. This is Monday, Tuesday morning, a lot of rain, all of the Shenandoah Valley, central, northern Virginia, most of Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and then up, up into southern New England, New York City, Long Island. And if you look at the total rainfall in the 6 to 10 day, well, that's decent rain. That's anywhere from 3 to as much as 5 or 6 inches of rain. Only notice southeast Virginia doesn't get the rain. They get the rain over the next 5 days. So there you go. That's a pretty significant amount of rain. Now, one of the things I'm worried about with Florence is because it is weakening and falling apart, we're going to get some uh, media attention here or criticisms that the media and the Weather Service and the Hurricane Center overhyped Florence. They overdid it. Um, and I'm kind of reminded of Irene. If you remember Irene, August 2011, it was a pretty significant storm in North Carolina, eastern North Carolina, in central and eastern Virginia. We all had significant power outages, the Del Mar of the Chesapeake Bay, pretty big storm. But once it got up to Jersey, New York City, it fell apart pretty rapidly. And there was a lot of consternation, a lot of gnashing of teeth, a lot of whining and complaining from the media and media critics that uh, it was overdone and overhyped. And you can see this is from uh, after the storm. This is from Howard Kurtz. Uh, this is from the Daily Beast and Newsweek talking about the media overdoing it. And uh, this is another one from the Weekly, from the Week. And you can see, uh, you know, com comments here, media guilty of scaremongering. Um, okay, but the other, some other people are saying, well, wait a second, you know, uh, people are complaining about missing the storm, but a big storm that endangers a sixth of the U.S. population and a quarter of the economic output is just the thing the media should be covering. So, you know, you're damned if you, damned if you don't. Anyway, and then, of course, um, you know, the other problem is the other big storm. This was in the year before, hey, this was a year before Sandy in October 2012. And look what it says right here, most important. The media hype, is the hype might cause people to ignore future threats. Is that what happened? You bet your ass it is. 
That's exactly what happened. That's one of the reasons why when Sandy hit in 2012 in October, a lot of people ignored the warnings because the weather service did not go with hurricane watches and warnings. Remember, Sandy was one of these hybrid storms that transformed into Nor'easter. So the weather service decided not to issue hurricane watches and warnings, and that gave people the false sense that even though it's going to be windy and stormy, it's not going to be a big deal. And they did this in part because of the fiasco involving Irene up in the big cities of the Northeast. So my point here about all this is that, you know, we may see some of this if Florence continues to weaken. Now, uh, you know, it's still going to be a pretty impressive storm, but I am concerned about that a little bit um, coming down the road here. All right, reminder, if you're in southeast Virginia, northeast quarter of North Carolina, getting rain and wind, which is what you're going to get tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday, does not mean you're getting a direct hit from Florence. You're supposed to get tropical storm force winds. You will see winds gusting up to 45 to 50 miles an hour. It'll be stormy. It'll be nasty. There'll be some coastal flooding. It's not a direct hit. You're not getting hit directly by Florence not going to happen okay rest assured on that one is it going to be a nice weekend no doesn't mean you're going to get a wrecked hit all right in summary florence is weakening no doubt about it uh the storm surge for north carolina will still be prolonged i misspelled prolonged there i'm sorry i'm dyslexic and massive it's just it, it's going to be the slow moving storm along the coast of north carolina drifting down towards uh myrtle beach and charleston that's going to keep that east wind piling up that water into the Outer Banks. The Outer Banks are going to take a huge beating here. Um, I, you know, we go there all the time. This is going to be bad for those guys. The sounds on the coast, everywhere. So even though it's weakening, the massive, the large surge of it, the prolonged east wind, the piling up the water from the open Atlantic into the coast, that's going to be really bad. Much stronger, I think, damage than you normally would see for a Category 2. All right. Now... A lot of people in the media are not going to understand that about the coastal damage. They're not going to understand that because, well, people in the media are communication majors. And if you've ever remembered talking to a communication major in college, they're probably five of the stupidest people you've ever seen. So that being said, if this trend continues and we're seeing the weakening of Florence, there's going to be more questions about media and uh, weather overhype. I think that's a long reaction, but expect it. I'm just saying expect it if Florence continues to weaken. Now, the remains of Florence will track north next week. Question is, how far does it swing out? Does it go up by Kentucky and Ohio? I don't think so. I know the GFS model is doing it again, and the hurricane models are going way out there, but the European model and the British model are not that far. They bring significant rain into western North Carolina, southwest Virginia, the Shenandoah Valley, the Virginia Piedmont, central and northern Virginia, most of Maryland, Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey into New York City. <clears throat> so we have to see which solution is right. Well, you know, right now I'm going definitely going with the big rain coming in. I think that's the correct solution. I don't think it's going to swing out by Kentucky and Ohio. <sighs> okay. There's the update. Sorry for the delay, but like I said, the website got so busy I couldn't update it, so I decided to do the video instead. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.